update. I, 28 female, called my friend a creep weirdo after she posted a TikTok about my husband, 32 male. Original post. I, 28 female, am friends with a girl named June, 28 female. My husband, 32 male, and I used to hang out a lot with her and her boyfriend. We'd go on double dates, take weekend trips together, and things like that. We've known each other for over two years, and I thought we were pretty close as a group. Until this weekend. My husband is an orthodontist, and one of his patients is June's 12-year-old half-sister, Raya. June often brings Raya to her dental appointments. June is also a small-time online influencer and is always recording and vlogging. My husband and I made it clear to her that we didn't want our faces in any of her videos online, and she seemed to respect that boundary. We don't use social media, except Reddit, and we trusted her when she promised not to post us online. Fast forward to last weekend, my brother sent me a TikTok link with a message, Dude, you've got to see this. I opened it, and it took me to June's TikTok account. She doesn't have a huge following, less than 10k, but the video he sent had around half a million views or likes. To my shock, it was a video compilation of my husband with the title, God, I see what you've done for others. The video was honestly super creepy. She had secretly recorded my husband during our double dates, and he had no idea. In some clips, she'd start filming herself, then pan the camera to my husband, giving a cutesy expression and mouthing words like, oh my god. The worst part was a clip of my husband working on her half-sister Raya in his scrubs. She didn't even blur out the kid's face while she was on a dental chair. I showed a video to my husband and he was horrified. He said it made him uncomfortable and violated to know someone had been secretly recording him. He was especially angry about being filmed while working on a patient. He texted June asking her to take down the video and delete any other videos she had of him. At first, she acted like she didn't know what he was talking about, then said she didn't mean any harm and did it for online engagement. Since, in her words, TikToks with hot guys go viral fast. She mentioned she gained a lot of followers because of it. This whole thing felt so weird, so we got our friends and family to report the video, and thankfully it's being taken down. This made June really angry, and she sent me a long text accusing me of being jealous of her online success and not wanting to see her succeed. I replied, You're delusional and unhinged. You're not successful, and you never will be. Stay away from us, you creepy weirdo. Now she's upset, telling our mutual friends that I was mean to her and posting about mental health on her social media, complaining about how cruel some women can be. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Not the a-hole. People who think online engagement is more important than basic human decency are sadly not at all uncommon, and they are, as you say, delusional and unhinged. Their success is not real, and except in a very few cases, it never will be. It's psychotic, honestly. My husband is so freaked out about this. I feel so bad for him. In all honesty, he should be concerned. Doctor visits are protected under HIPAA, and her recording then uploading without the patient's permission would be a violation of that, wouldn't it? Not they all. She is creeping on your husband. Just so many boundaries crossed. Just as creepy. May need to make a TikTok video of while someone are mean to others. Sometimes it's justified when they are violating HIPAA laws and the privacy of another human being without permission. Just to get likes because their life is so empty. Not what a person looks like it doesn't give another right to post things about them. I am fat and would love to join a gym, but I'm scared to, due to social media nowadays. I don't want someone posting images of me online. Heck, I barely go out in public anymore. I know the feeling about the gym thing. In my area, they have gyms where recording videos is not allowed. Maybe try finding something like that? It's like you can't breathe in public without someone taking out their phones and recording you. Not the a-hole. You and your husband had set clear boundaries, and she violated those boundaries. This shows that she does not respect y'all at all. I recommend cutting her off entirely, as anyone who disturbs your peace is not worth your time. Yes, we're cutting her off entirely. I don't know if her boyfriend is aware of this or not, but I guess he'll have to be collateral damage because I don't want her to weasel her way back into our lives. He might need to drop the half-sister as a patient, and or tell the parents that she, June, is not allowed to accompany her anymore. 
I agree, that is a creepy weirdo. If she can't get followers or likes without lying and getting consent for people to be recorded, then she needs to find a new career. Yes, he's in the process of informing her parents. I don't think he's gonna drop her as a patient, as her treatment is almost done and it's gonna be hassle for her to find a new orthodontist. Now for the first update. I don't want to make a whole new post for the same thing, so here goes. 1. My husband's practice reached out to Raya's parents to inform them of the situation via email, as they wanted everything documented. The parents responded and they were shocked and very apologetic. They've agreed that they'll be the ones to accompany Raya to her appointments from now on instead of June. They even offered to meet my husband to apologize in person, but it told them that it wasn't necessary. 2. June's TikTok video is still in the process of being taken down. No major updates on that yet. I think she may have contested the reports or something. My husband and I have blocked her and everything. My brother is still keeping an eye on her TikTok account, just in case she posts anything else about us. If she does, we'll deal with it and probably consult a lawyer. 3. My husband is still pretty shaken up, upset, and annoyed by this whole thing. He's taken a few days off from work, and I've done the same. We might plan a trip to get away for a bit and clear our heads. Right now, I just want to be there for him so I won't be posting anything for now. 4. We haven't told her boyfriend about any of this yet. My husband isn't in the right headspace to deal with that right now. And honestly, I think it's better for us to focus on ourselves for the time being. We don't want the added stress of dealing with how her boyfriend might react or whether he was in on this. We'll inform him later when things settle down. I know it might seem selfish, but right now, this feels like the best choice. Thanks for all the responses. Second update a month later. Just when we thought the drama was over. Nope. We finally told June's boyfriend everything and he was shocked, hurt, and really confused. It turns out that June managed his social media accounts and he had no idea what she was posting. He thanked us for letting him know and we thought that would be the end of it. But then he asked to meet up because he needed to discuss something further. To be honest, we were really hesitant to meet with him. We were so done with the drama and didn't want to get sucked back in. But he seemed genuinely concerned and willing to listen, so we agreed. When we met, he told us he confronted June and she broke down, saying she loved him but claimed her obsession with my husband was all for social media clout. Apparently, my husband being a total package made for great content. When he asked to see her phone, she refused, so he checked her laptop and found hundreds of sneaky photos and video of my husband. And for laughs, she had pictures of me, looking my absolute worst. Mouth open while eating, making weird faces, the whole deal. I usually think I look pretty decent, but these photos were the exact opposite. It's like she was trying to prove some twisted point about my husband's ugly wife. Her boyfriend ended up dumping her. But honestly, this has freaked us out even more. The scale of her obsession is terrifying. Hundreds of photos and videos? That's not just a crush, that's an unhealthy fixation. The idea that she might escalate is really unsettling. As a small consolation, her boyfriend made her delete the videos from her social media and laptop. But God knows how many copies she's kept elsewhere. Even though June hasn't reached out to us since all this happened, we're still on high alert. Her silence is unnerving, and we're bracing ourselves for whatever might come next. Hopefully, it really was just about social media clout and not some creepy, fatal attraction type obsession. It's crazy that she was friends with me for over two years. We hung out all the time, took weekend trips with her and her boyfriend, and had so many mutual friends. And no one had any idea she was doing this behind our backs. Either I'm terrible at reading people or she's really good at being sneaky and deceptive. I'm also mentally kicking myself for not noticing that someone was taking pictures of me. My husband and I definitely need to be more aware of our surroundings from now on. On a positive note, Raya's parents were really thankful to my husband for continuing to treat her after everything. That's it for now, and hopefully this is the end of the whole ordeal. Just be careful, OP. June sounds unhinged. We are. It's kinda scary though because she knows where we live, where we usually hang out, where I work, and where my husband works. Can the both of you start asking a co-worker to head to your cars with you at the end of the day? Minimize how often the two of you are solo out in public. And maybe switch up where you're hanging out and install cameras outside your home. 
We have cameras outside our home. Great idea about the coworker thing. Man, this is some serious soap opera level drama. Like you said, though, better to stay aware. No one likes being caught off guard. Hopefully, it ends soon and you can move on. At least the parenting situation seems good. Raya's parents are wonderful. They were the ones who used to initially accompany Raya to her appointments. They said June told them that she wants to spend more time with Raya and she's otherwise busy, so she could be the one chaperoning her. They had agreed, because Raya was excited about spending time with her sister. It's really horrible that Jane was using Raya as a ruse to get near my husband, not gonna lie. Man, this is wild. But at least the boyfriend saw the truth and dumped her. Nobody needs that kind of obsession in their life. Stay safe, y'all. Also, don't be too hard on yourself for not noticing. Guess she was just a pro at being creepy. Her boyfriend is also the victim here. I feel bad for him. Last story. Am I the a-hole for proposing to my ex-wife's ex-best friend? My fiancé, Sarah, is wonderful. I met her a year after I met my ex-wife, Martha. I've always admired Sarah for being an honest, kind person who fights for minorities, volunteers, and has a great sense of humor. Sarah and my ex-wife were great friends. However, when I initially wanted to get to know Sarah better, she kept her distance. Over the years, though, we became very good friends. Seven years ago, Martha, 38 female, cheated on me with a colleague of hers. I had my suspicions, so I asked Sarah, 36 female, if she knew anything about it. She said she didn't. I did my own digging and eventually found proof of the affair. To make it worse, this colleague had even come to our house a few times, so he knew my family. I left Martha immediately, but it was a tough time, especially for my daughter Lily, 15 female. During that period, Sarah was incredibly supportive. She cut ties with Martha and let me stay with her after the divorce, even though I insisted I could stay in a hotel. I didn't want to bother my other friends as they were all married, and my family lived too far away. Sarah was patient and listened to me when I needed someone the most. When Martha found out I was staying with Sarah, she laughed and said she wasn't surprised. I asked her what she meant, but she refused to explain. Later, my daughter came to visit, and she was extremely rude to Sarah. I asked Lily why she was acting like that, and she told me that her mother had said the reason for our divorce was because I was in love with Sarah. Furious, I called Martha, but she claimed she always knew I had feelings for Sarah and hung up on me. It had been years since I had felt a spark for anyone, but I began looking forward to coming home to Sarah. Eventually, we became a couple, and Sarah got pregnant. We now have a five-year-old son, Caleb. When Caleb was born, Lily, who had always been unpleasant with Sarah, suddenly became calm and got along with Caleb really well. In fact, she's almost overprotective of him. When I discipline Caleb, Lily gets upset, takes him to her room, and locks the door. It's hard to spend time with my son when Lily is around because she monopolizes him. Sarah says I should be happy that Lily loves her brother, but it's a bit much. A week ago, I proposed to Sarah and she said yes. When Martha found out, she came to our house, furious. Thankfully, Sarah wasn't home at the time. Martha accused me of using Sarah's kindness to fuel my sick obsession with her. I told her she was crazy and had no idea what she was talking about. She then claimed that throughout our marriage, all I could think about was Sarah. She pointed out that every time I did something good for others, I justified it by saying Sarah would do the same. Martha went on, accusing me of only donating to certain causes because Sarah did, claiming I wasn't originally interested in movements like BLM, but pretended to be an expert because of Sarah. She said that during our social gatherings, I would always seek Sarah's attention and smile like a child when she was around. Martha also said that I refused to be intimate with her, and she believed it was because I was thinking about Sarah. She even claimed that I treated Caleb differently than I treated Lily, because I had always wanted a son, and it was Sarah who gave me that son. I was furious and told her to leave before she woke Caleb up. She laughed, saying I never cared about waking Lily when she was younger, but now I treated my son differently. She also insinuated that I was obsessed with Sarah's achievements. I was so angry that I told her to get out of my house. I haven't told Sarah about Martha's outburst. I admit that I've always admired Sarah, 
But I never thought of it as an obsession. And I definitely didn't plan on marrying Sarah while I was with Martha. It's true that I've always wanted a son, but that doesn't mean I don't love Lily. Martha cheated on me, so why am I being made to feel like the bad guy? I can't help but wonder, am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Your ex-wife's infidelity led to your divorce, and it's important to remember that her choices were the catalyst for everything that followed. It's natural for you to seek happiness and love after such a betrayal. To be honest, I think OP had feelings for Sarah, but he never acted on them, and she also controlled herself. She kept her distance, and he admired her whether it was in a romantic or platonic way. The main culprit is the ex-wife, who couldn't handle her own insecurities and miscommunication that led to the ultimate path that destroyed her marriage and her daughter's home. So she can pull herself out of her moral high and stop manipulating her cheating. P.S. Clearly communicate with your daughter how her mother's infidelity led to the divorce only. She chose the coward's route. Right? X was clearly in her head the past however many years. Probably cheated on Opie to get back at him for his love story she built in her head of him and Sarah. Does Lily know Martha cheated on you with a co-worker? She doesn't know about the cheating, but she does know that during our breakup, Martha was dating a man. Why would you not tell her? She's old enough to know. You have evidence. Why are you letting your lousy ex ruin your relationship with your daughter? I would do everything imaginable to save my relationship with my girl, even if it meant going nuclear on a lying, cheating ex that I had evidence of infidelity on. Your ex has earned zero protection from you regarding the truth. You're right. I think I wanted to protect my daughter. I thought that if Lily hates me and then when she learns of her mother's infidelity, she hates her too, she'll feel even more betrayed. And I don't know if she'll be able to overcome that. To be honest, she didn't sound like such a great friend to your ex-wife, except when she initially kept her distance from you. Is it because she realized you liked her back then? Because the way you write about her, it seems really obvious. It was probably obvious to your ex as well. Your ex cheated on you which was wrong, and her bestie proceeded to cut her off and offer you refuge which is really odd. Within two years of your marriage breaking down, you then become a father again. So yes, it was all very quick. I may be wrong, but it sounds like your ex was already checking out of your marriage because of your obvious admiration of Sarah. You sound like you are marrying the woman you wanted all along. Yes, you're the a-hole and so is Sarah. 